This lecture will be about the Clery Act. Introduction. In 1987, the Clery Act for Security on Campus was formed by Connie and Howard Cleary after the 1986 rape and murder of Jean Cleary, their daughter. Jean was a student at Lehigh University in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. This nonprofit organization works to this day to ensure safer college campuses nationwide through advocacy, pushing for policy change, and facilitating trainings for university and college officials nationwide. In 1990, Congress passed the Crime Awareness and Campus Security Act after much campaigning by the Clearies. President Bush signed it into law in November of 1990, and the act was later named the Jean Cleary Disclosure of Campus Security Policy and Campus Crime Statistics Act to memorialize Jean. The Clearies set out to change the laws regarding the reporting of crime statistics by colleges and universities in the United States. Warnings and statistics were not being adequately provided to students and their families, which was the reason the Cleary Center and the Cleary Act were created. The Clearies have argued that if they had known the rising rate of crime on Lehigh's campus, they would have sent Jean to a safer campus. We of course have no way of knowing whether or not this could have been prevented if Jean had gone to a different school, but it is important to notify students as well as parents. From a news article published a week before President Bush was to sign the act into law, quote, only 352 of the nation's 3,000 colleges and universities and 5,000 other post-secondary schools now submit such figures to the FBI. This article was published for the Inquirer, a Philadelphia newspaper, on October 18, 1990. Today, all colleges and universities must submit crime statistics to the FBI under the Cleary Act. Timely Warnings The Cleary Act requires college and, and colleges and universities to make security policies public, publish a crime log, annual crime report, and send out timely warnings to the campus about any crime that poses an immediate threat. You may have seen these timely warnings in emails you've gotten from UNCG. This is an email from October 8th, the latest timely warning email about rape and sexual assault at the recording of this lecturette. These emails are sent out in order for UNCG to stay compliant with the Cleary Act. They are also a warning of an imminent danger on campus. The difference between a timely warning and any other alert of an emergency on campus is the urgency of the situation. If a danger or dangerous person is still present on campus, then a timely warning will be sent out. Notice the reasons listed in the beginning of the email as to why the email is being sent out. Compare this wording to previous timely warnings that have been sent out just this semester. Notice also the greater level of detail and the safety precautions listed at the end of the email. Nowhere in this email is a plea for would-be sexual aggressors to not commit violence against others. The only instruction is directed towards would-be victims as well as bystanders. What would you suggest needs to be added or changed about these emails to promote a more preventative rather than reactionary approach to sexual assault on campus? Do you agree with the continued wording of victims when indicating the kinds of help and treatment they can seek out at the end of the email? Why would the wording of victim versus survivor be significant. Annie E. Clark Annie E. Clark was a student at UNC Chapel Hill when she reported to the school in 2007 that she was sexually assaulted. Annie says this of the university official she confided in, quote, she told me rape is like football and if you look back on the game what would you have done differently in that situation, end quote. Along with creating an anonymous reporting method for sexual assault on Chapel Hill's campus, Clark, Andrea Pino, and two other students filed a Title IX complaint against Chapel Hill for the mishandling and underreporting of rape cases. As a result of this complaint, the U.S. Department of Education launched an investigation against the schools in North Carolina that are undergoing a current Title IX investigation. Specifically about sexual assault are Guilford College and UNC Chapel Hill. There are 55 schools on this list, many of which are private or Ivy League institutions. Clark has gone on to co-found the website endrapeoncampus.org, as well as create a national network in hopes of connecting sexual assault survivors to resources and provide an opportunity to share their stories with others. The reason a Title IX complaint was filed is because Title IX is about providing equal access across genders to all students. If the campus environment is not safe, then more women will not take night classes, feel uncomfortable walking home at night, and not have access to the kinds of education that they deserve, 
due to the incidences of violence on college campuses. Title IX also requires colleges and universities to take appropriate and quick action in sexual assault cases, <clears throat> as well as report crime rates. Schools who are under a Title IX investigation are in violation of the Clery Act as well if they are not reporting the crimes accurately and swiftly. Compliance and Violation In order for a school to be in compliance with the Clery Act, they must alert everyone on campus, students and faculty, with a timely warning or an emergency notification. A timely warning is used if there is an ongoing threat to campus or an emergency notification is used for all other situations. The policies for these different types of notifications should be separate. Under Title IX and the Clery Act, college campuses must provide specific information, options, and resources to survivors in the case of sexual violence. Institutions must have a prompt and equitable process for resolving complaints. By October 1st, campuses must release an annual security report made available to everyone on campus, and crime statistics must be collected from local law enforcement personnel as well as campus officials. If a school violates the Clery Act, they could face warnings up to $35,000 per violation fines, the limitation or suspension of federal aid, or the loss of eligibility to participate in federal student aid programs. This information comes from the website knowyourix9.org, a website dedicated to spreading information about Title IX and student rights as well as information about the Clery Act. In 2013, Dominican College of Blauvelt in Orangeburg, New York, was fined $200,000 plus interest for failing to comply with the Clery Act. The college also had to agree to take steps toward better complying with the Act. <clears throat> Although this is separate from the Title IX complaints that can be lodged under the U.S. Department of Education. In another example of violation, Yale University was fined $165,000 for quote, the failure to report four instances of forcible sex offenses occurring between 2001 and 2002. In this article, Allison Kiss, executive director of the Clery Center for Security on Campus, points out the issue of not having enough people who are properly trained to handle and comply with the Clery Act on campus. The increased knowledge of the Clery Act in recent years has caused college campuses to become more aware of their role in preventing sexual crimes across the board. The Clery Act at UNCG. The annual campus and security report is available on the UNCG police website at police.uncg.edu slash information slash Clery. Emails are sent out with timely warnings and emergency notifications, and the crime log is publicly accessible on UNCG police's website as well at police.uncg.edu slash information slash crime log. In my investigation and experience as a student, sexual assault and rape that happen off campus are not sent out as a timely warning, as opposed to on-campus events, but they will be recorded in the crime log if reported to UNCG police, other law enforcement agencies, or another university personnel if the survivor is identified as a UNCG student. Here is a list of crime prevention programs that UNCG offers. police.uncg.edu slash programs slash index dot php. The RAD, or Rape Aggression Defense Program, and the Victim Assistance Program are the only ones listed that specifically have to do with sexual assault prevention. There are no consent workshops or programs listed that would direct the efforts to prevention rather than reaction. What are some program ideas or campaigns that UNCG could engage in to encourage respect and consent in sexual relationships that would pr further prevent sexual assault and rape? In summary, why should we care? The creation of the Clery Act came out of a horrific and tragic crime, but uncovered a larger problem on college campuses throughout the United States. Some colleges and universities have made it a habit to underreport or cover up sexual assault and rape in order to save face, receive steady funding, or simply because they do not view it as a serious and widespread issue. Along with providing clear statistics surrounding campus crime, the Clery Act can also help to dispel certain rape myths that contribute to rape culture on college campuses. These can include the argument that a woman invited the assault based on her clothing or level of intoxication, or that she was in any way responsible for the assault rather than placing the blame on the rapist. In a study conducted by Amnesty International in 2005, quote, men were more likely than women to attribute blame to a woman for her own sexual assault if her wardrobe was revealing, end quote. This is important because 
dispelling rape myths and disrupting rape culture, is the first step in transitioning to a more preventative approach to stopping sex sexual assault and rape, rather than a purely reactionary one. Also, according to the study, there have been a, there has been a positive correlation between men's belief of rape myths and their likelihood toward sexually aggressive behavior. Removing cultural stereotypes can prevent sexually aggressive behavior from developing in would-be perpetrators. Further, internalized oppression can lead women um, who can lead to women who might victim blame other women who have been sexually assaulted, thus showing the need for cross-gender programming that aims to dispel rape myths. This will hopefully lead to a greater understanding of the necessity of safe and informed consent and the lower the rate of sexual crimes on college campuses. Knowing about the Cleary Act and how it affects sexual assault survivors is imperative for both university staff but also students. There is a large disparity between how sexual assault cases are treated on campus versus off campus by local police departments, but the amount of victim blaming and dismissal of this serious and traumatic crime happens everywhere. Educating ourselves about what we can do to further hold universities and colleges accountable, as well as creating prevention campaigns focused on consent, are steps to eliminating the rape culture that has been overtaken campuses nationwide.